Welcome, dear friends, to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for Sunday, November the 20th, 2022. Uh, The Sunday between November 20th and 26th uh, is always the Reign of Christ Sunday or Christ the King Sunday. Um, This is part of what the lectionary does is it teaches us about the church year and how we follow along through scripture, the life of Christ, and the life of the church. Um, My name is Brian J. Monroe. I'm pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. And I'm here to read scripture for you today from the lectionary and a devotional. We're using what is called option two. And so there's gonna be four readings today because it's a Sunday. We begin with our semi-continuous reading from the Old Testament, from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 1 to 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back into to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, and neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Now we read the psalm. That's not a psalm, but it's, of course, Simeon's song. And these things you might notice, we're getting a bit of a... Sorry to break away from my usual reading, but we're getting a bit of a message here because we're approaching... Christmas. And so we're starting to talk more and more about the arrival of Christ. In the case of this, the Jeremiah prophecy, the arrival of the King. And now from Luke chapter 1 verses 68 to 79, the song that Simeon sang when he greeted Christ at eight days of age in the temple in Jerusalem. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Our reading today from the New Testament from the letter, Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 11 to 20. Being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. 
He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And now our gospel reading from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 23, verses 33 to 43. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified Jesus and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And those who crucified him cast lots to divide his garments, and the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And that criminal said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly, I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. This is your eternal word, Almighty God. Grant us, the first of all, thank you for the good and generous, gracious provision of it to us. And grant us the ability to go beyond merely hearing the words, but to understand them, to have them enter into us in the deepest of ways, into our mind and our hearts, our very spirits, and therein work what is good and pleasing in us to your will. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. And now from Oswald Chambers' excellent devotional book, My Utmost for His Highest, we read the entry for today entitled, The Forgiveness of God. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 7. Beware of the pleasant view of the fatherhood of God. God is so kind and loving that, of course, he will forgive us. That sentiment has no place whatever in the New Testament. The only ground on which God can forgive us is the tremendous tragedy of the cross of Christ. To put forgiveness on any other ground is unconscious blasphemy. The only ground on which God can forgive sin and reinstate us in his favor is through the cross of Christ and in no other way. Forgiveness, which is so easy for us to accept, cost the agony of Calvary. It is possible to take the forgiveness of sin, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and our sanctification with the simplicity of faith and to forget at what enormous cost to God it was all made ours. Forgiveness is the divine miracle of grace. 
it cost God the cross of Jesus Christ before he could forgive sin and remain a holy God. Never accept a view of the fatherhood of God if it blots out the atonement. The revelation of God is that he cannot forgive. He would contradict his nature if he did. The only way we can be forgiven is by being brought back to God by the atonement. God's forgiveness is only natural in the supernatural domain. Compared with the miracle of the forgiveness of sin, the experience of sanctification is slight. Sanctification is simply the marvelous expression of the forgiveness of sins in a human life. But the thing that awakens the deepest well of gratitude in a human being is that God has forgiven sin. Paul never got away from this. When once you realize all that it cost God to forgive you, you will be held as in a vice, constrained by the love of God. Almighty Father, let us never, ever forget or make light of the cosmic cost of the cross. The only act that would allow a holy God to forgive unholy created humanity such an immense cost the only action that you could be involved in and survive no other being could survive that and so you remain holy this side of the cross and we are redeemed and can come home May you be praised forever, and may we never lose sight of the cost of the cross. We pray this to your glory in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. As always, friends, I thank you for listening through to the end, and I pray that uh, you have found some benefit in today's scripture readings and reflections. And until we are able to be together again, to do more of the same, I bid you in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom.